Welcome, fans, to another edition, a special Friday the 13th edition of the Cheap Heat Productions Wrestling Podcast. My name is Jack Kilby, Executive Vice President of Great North Wrestling. Tonight, we have a stacked show planned with a, a very special guest, a legendary guest, as a matter of fact. But before we get into the, the formal introductions, I'd like to welcome Maurice once again to his own show. <laughs> well, welcome to the Mario Mancini show. Mario is not here at the moment, so we're going to start off with Mario's guest today, Paul Roba. Paul's been on the show a good few times, made quite a few headlines over the last couple of years with various <laughs> different things. And I, I do send you clips every so often, Jack, of just little five, ten second videos of the stuff that Paul comes out with. Just I don't know how he does it, but the way the way you say things. <laughs> funny, 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 funny. Highly Look, we're gonna have, we're <laughs> gonna have to start off. We're gonna have to start off <clears throat> where we kind of finished last year. Oh, oh there he is. is. Welcome, Mary. Welcome to the show. What's going on? <laughs> Usually, it's me that's late. <laughs> yeah, Scott Wilder had me on the phone telling me oh. stories about Stromboli. Oh, well. We we're going to start off, Paul, where we where we finished last year, and you've seen the news this week. I sent you the articles. Ric Flair wants another match. He still hasn't answered your call from last year. Have you any interest in rekindling that? No, not really. Um, <clears throat> it, it's apparent that it's not going to happen. Um, he'll just, you know, like like anybody, he's just going to avoid me, and that's okay. I I said my piece, and um, if he doesn't want to. You know, come back over the top. That's fine. Okay, Jack. Well, I I wanted to uh, start off with um, some of the the notable highlights that that you you had in the the World Wrestling Federation, where um, you know I had the pleasure of of seeing you live a number of times, and I'll get to that. But in <laughs> in 1987, you, you had some really standout matches with uh, the Hart Foundation. And I'm just curious, I, I remember thinking this as a kid, what, was there ever any intention to, or plans to, to put the tag belts on yourself and Jim Powers as the Young Stallions? Well, I heard rumor that uh, the belts were going to be put on us. I don't know what made that all change, but um, and I know I got to a, a certain point where I was fed up with Jim. Um, and, and so were a lot of other wrestlers. So I wanted this. Well, I, I did split up our tag team. <clears throat> Excuse me. And when I did that, um, you know, everything went in the shitter. Mm. In, in terms of uh, legendary tag teams as well, I wanted to get your thoughts on you, – you had some really standout matches with uh, Demolition in that, in that era. Do you, do you have any thoughts as to why they're, they're not in uh, the Hall of Fame at this point? Demolition? Yes, not sir. in the Hall of Fame? Um, no, I mean, look, I, I think – I see them a lot when, when I go to shows. I think they're both really nice guys. Um, I think they had a great gimmick. What, you know, what what puts you in the Hall of Fame? <clears throat> At, you know, when you think about it, like hockey, it could be for X amount of goals, X amount of assists. Uh, football, you know, you set your records. Um, so many tackles or touchdown passes or catches or um, – so what sets you apart in, in wrestling? It, it's, it's somebody's opinion, you know, and actually that somebody is probably just one guy, you know, so they're not taking votes from, from fans and basing it off of that. Um, not that they probably listen to them anyway, but I think it comes down to, you know, that one guy and then he decides, um, but what is the Hall of Fame in wrestling? I mean, yeah, it's it's an honor by by every stretch of imagination. It's an honor. There is no Hall of Fame that you can physically go to. 
At least not to my knowledge. No. Right? So, um, again, what is it then? Acknowledgement. Okay, great. W what else? People can't go like they do the Baseball Hall of Fame, the Basketball Hall of Fame, where it all originated from. So, I don't know. You know, is it an honor? Like I said, yeah, it's an honor. But who's deciding that honor? What did you accomplish? What have you done, uh, you know, that should put you there and you're not there? Why? Because maybe somebody's mad at you because, uh, you know, they didn't like your attitude or, uh, you know, I don't know, whatever, you know, whatever the reasoning is. You know, he asked you for 10 bucks one day and you told him, no, I don't know. I don't know what the reasoning is as to why people don't get in there and, and, and justly deserve to get in there. So demolition was a standout, you know, by all means, they were a standout. Um, but again, what is it based on? High flying moves? All right, they weren't high flyers, but neither were a lot of other people that are in the Hall of Fame. So what was it? That's an answer that, you know, that's a question that you have to ask Vince McMahon. Fair enough. Maurice? Yeah. Are we going to have yeah, a countdown? Nice. Did the show start? We started, yeah, we started off. started without off you. Uh, Maurice, you're a real prick. You know that? <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, I, gave, I, gave, I gave the final word to Paul. Will we, will we start without him? Yeah. Listen, don't believe mine. It's I that. had an open. I had an open. I had an opening. I made a promise, and I, I had an opening. You screwed the whole thing up. Yeah. Okay. Listen. Okay, there well, you I'm, go. Ready? Wait. Let's go, Maurice. Here's the opening. Go. <laughs> Welcome back to the Mario Mancini show with special guest Mario Mancini and yeah, Mario Mancini's special guest, guest Paul Roma. <laughs> Thanks, Hector. 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 Thanks, Hector. Tell these guys, Hector. Tell them. <laughs> Yeah, there you uh, go. Over. Mario, on, I want kid. to know. Open it up. I, I want to know, Mario, about how you two guys met, you and Paul, and how you're still such friends all these years later. Obviously, you want to hear that Sally. story? Wait, who yeah. said we're friends? <laughs> <laughs> you want to hear that story? I'll tell you that story. Afraid of the 13th. This, uh, no, it's Scream, and uh, mm. let me tell you a little something about this. This is uh, this is kind of special. I'm going to tell you why. Because I have a very dear friend of mine that's very private. I'm just going to refer to her as Jen Jen. She is my, my partner in crime in horror movies. I mean, just absolutely. That's all I watch. Are hard, I mean, gory, disgusting. I mean, Midnight Meat Train. Maurice, do you see the Midnight Meat Train? No. Oh, yeah. I've seen the human centipede, though, Mario. No, oh, yeah, that's great. That real gory. I love that, right? So, but this is her favorite horror movie. And, and, and Roma will appreciate this because Roma and I are really close to our fathers. So this is a symbol, really, because this particular movie is – the movie, all the series of them, as the, her father took her to, from the first one to whatever the one until he passed away. So, not only is this a, a, a horror movie to her, it's it's kind of it's sentimental, means a lot to her. So, I just wanted to give her a shout out here on the Mario Mancini show. So, <laughs> you 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 want to hear this for the first time? And Roma's going to hear it for the 900th. You want to know how I met Paul Roma? Yes. He just came in a bar one night and kicked the living shit out of it. No, no, no. Um, I was, I think we were in Trumbull or Monroe, Connecticut. I can't remember which one. And I was there with my buddy who was an absolute nut, but could, could work better than anybody I know. And that was Gino Carabello. And Gino and I were sitting together as usual because we were two peas in a pod, you know, he could meek there. And we're sitting there doing what we usually do is just BS and stuff. And um, we see this old little guy walking in the locker room, kind of a little Willie Pep looking guy, you know. 
and behind him was this curly haired permed guy with like you know, I used to joke with Roma when I used to stand next to him back in the eighties. I used to go like this to his shoulders, and he's like, "What are you doing?" I go, "I I need to bowl a few frames. I thought I'd bar your shoulders." Comes in with these bowling balls, show these these biceps. Like I'm like Gino, who the hell is that? He goes, "I have no idea." I go, "That guy is huge, right?" So, so they left. So I go to the wrestling school, you know. And he walks in, knows nothing about pro wrestling. Zero. Doesn't know who Hulk Hogan is. Doesn't doesn't have the history. Uh, you know, doesn't know who Frank Gotch is or any, you know, no history of pro wrestling like like us, like we can go back and, you know, all these guys that break back the gorgeous George, you know what I mean? Antonino Rocca and all these guys. Roman knows nothing, nothing. So he goes, I don't know. This guy told me I should give this, give this a shot. So Tony Altamar took him and started training him. And Altamar actually said to him he needed to gain some weight. I mean, Altamar himself had a hard on for the guy right off the rip, you know, telling him that he's got to gain weight. I mean, here's this guy comes in, like he came from Greece and they freaking, they, they just carved him out and they said, okay, go to America. All right. So, so he was training for a little bit and then Gino and I got a hold of him and said, listen, listen, we'll train you we train on the off days. We'll work with you, you know, six weeks, I went to wrestling school for 10 months. Six weeks later, I said, yeah, you're ready to go for t to TV. And I took them TV and um, he had to do a job and he was sitting there. I was sitting next to him. You know what I mean? So, you know, chief goes, who, you know, I, I always forget his name. Oh, At Charles Atlas. He goes, who's Charles Atlas over there? I said, that's Paul Romo. Could he work? I go, yeah, yeah. I trained in Altamar school. He can, he can work. When I look back at the videos of when he first broke in, I'm kind of embarrassed because I, Gino and I just barely showed him enough to get by because it, it was not good. So, um, so he's sitting there, and he goes, Who's that guy's giving me a dirty look. Who's that? I go, that's it, Jake Roberts. He goes, why is he looking at me like that? I said, because he, he doesn't look like you. That's why Jake's looking at you like that. You know, just about right after I said that, Hogan came around the corner to the left and was going to the back of the dressing room where the bathroom was in Poughkeepsie. And Roma goes, who's that? I said, that's uh, Hulk Hogan. That's the heavyweight champion. He goes, he's fat. I go, whoa, shh. <laughs> you can't say that you're black ball or you haven't even started yet. He goes, well, look at him. He's bloated. He's a big water bag. And I'm like, Roman, you can't say that here. You can't do that. No, I don't care. I mean, well, I mean, Roma back then, I mean, th there's the only the only person I can compare Roma to, and I've compared him to that before, and I don't think I've ever told him, but when I've told stories about Roma, the only person I could really I can really compare him to is Jake Lamata. So Jake, if Jake, if you gave Jake a wrong look, he'd just whack out. He, he would if you said peep to him, he'd just whack out. You know what I mean? So Roma, you, you had to be very careful. <laughs> With Roma, when he was 25, 26 years old, you had to be really, really careful with Roma. He's a he's a sweet guy, man. Right? But you look, look, it's it's just like, you know. He, let me finish. So he goes, he's got to do a job. So he comes back to the dressing room and he sits down. 
And he's doing one of these. I'm going to beat his ass in the parking lot. I'm like, what? He can't beat me. He can't beat me. I'll fucking show him. I'll show him. who. I go, no, Roman, you get to pro wrestling. He can't beat me. Right? So I had to calm him down. So I got in front of him. I got him by the shoulders. I said, look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Look in his dressing room. Does anybody look like you? Anyone. I went, no, they don't. You know what that means? They can't deny you. They can't. It's impossible. It's impossible. You're the best looking guy in here. It's impossible. They can't deny you. And you know what? They didn't. He, he, from all the wrestlers I've ever known in my life, he has probably spent the shortest time doing jobs than anybody I know. I mean, look at Bundy. Bundy was there for a while, like in 81, 80. He was doing jobs just like me. And then he left, you know, shaved his head and became King Kong Bundy and came back. But he was doing jobs for a long time. You know what I mean? So, you know, that's 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 <laughs> that's how that went down. But like I said, you had to be careful. Like there, there I I was Roma tried and he still tries today. I mean, Lord knows I made a huge mistake again. And Roma was on the phone with me and just tore me to shreds. And while he was doing it, I was going like this because I knew he was right. I knew he was right. You know, I did it again. 57 and I did it again. <laughs> and there was Roma just like 85 in the car. Blah, 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 blah. Me And I'm going, okay, okay, okay. Okay, and years later, he's still doing it. And I'm going, okay, okay, okay. Th nothing changes. So I wanted to get in good with the office so badly. You know what I mean? I really wanted to make it. You know, I really wanted some guidance. I really, I wanted to be the next Bruno San Martino, right? Instead, I became the next Frank Williams. So I really, really wanted this. So when they came to the gym, I was training Lisa Sliwa, okay? She was doing good. And we all know who Lisa Sliwa is, right? Curtis Sliwa's wife, he's the head of the Guardian Angels in New York City. So Lisa wants to become a wrestler. So they send her to Tony Altamar. He goes, you train her. I go, okay. Back then when you trained a woman, everything was to the right. Males learned everything to the left. The females worked all the way to the right. So if you watch old footage of Moolah and, and, you know, all those girls back then, you'll see that they all work. They all work to the right instead of the left. So I was trying, I was training her and the office decides to come in. Gene Okerlund, the whole crew, right? So I get in the ring with Lisa and I thought we were going to lock up and I'm showing her hammer locks and stuff. And, and Oakland goes, let her hip toss you. I go, okay. So I know, but kayfabe was alive and well back then strong. I was hip tossing myself. That's why I kind of felt okay with it, but I didn't realize that the marks aren't going to know that. So she hip tosses me. And I get up and Gene Orkelin goes, Mario Mancini, what do you think of Lisa Sliwa? And I said, well, she's tough, Gene. Cut, right? So Orkelin looks at me and he goes, hey, why don't you get Roma to come in with her? And I go, okay, sure. <laughs> I go on to the gym floor. Roma's at the tricep pushdowns, stack in a 45-pound plate in a pin on the bottom, <laughs> okay? The stack plus the 45 pin in the bottom. So now he – and you know what? He's not doing one of these where people cheat and push down. Not, not, not Roma. He's upright. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> His biceps, it looks like his it looks like his triceps are just gonna pop out of the back of his arm going, 
Want to grab a coffee? I mean, they're like popping me. They, they. I go, hey, Roma, they want you to go in with Lisa Sleo. He goes, hey, get away from me, Mancini. I go, oh, it'll be good for you, Roma. You get some, you get some publicity. You go in there with Lisa Sleo. He just get the fuck away from me, Mancini. I go, no, but Roma, the weights drop out of nowhere. I, I didn't even see it coming. All I knew is something was coming at my face. And he, he used to be he used to be PKA karate. He used to, nobody knows that, but he used to do full contact like so in this big spinning kick. And I I just luckily went back and it just went right by my face. And I walked back into the ring and I go, I don't think he's gonna do it, Gene. <laughs> and uh that was that was the end of that. But um I'm sorry to interrupt. We have uh, we have a run in here, a special guest. Oh, who Didn't is it? For a second, Jose Luis Rivera. No! <laughs> how you doing, guy? Manzanita. What's going on, bro? Oh, how you doing, bro? I'm good. How are you? Okay, you? doing great, brother. <laughs> you look good. I know. I keep in shape. Yeah, Jose always looks. He's still working. Yes. Yeah, I'm in, uh, I got 30 years of correctional officer already. Yeah. Wow. Jose yes. That's still the working. Job. He's yeah. Still working. Wow. That's the way. Make a little money. <laughs> yeah, let brother. Me, let me tell you something. You could be in the worst mood in the world. You could feel sick. You could feel tired. It didn't matter. Once I entered that dressing room and I sat next to him. <laughs> That's oh, it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let me help you all night long. <laughs> he used to think like nothing. Like it was a little something. He goes, Mancini, I take this. They put it here. I put it here. I go, what? <laughs> what are you going to do with me? <laughs> Mancini, I take this. Mancinita, I go. Do you know Mancinita? That's a girl. Yeah, Mancinita. <laughs> <laughs> he called me uh, that for eight years. That's all he called. <laughs> yes. I love him. You got a long he's way, man. Ever. And let me tell you something about Jose Luis Rivera. Let me, let me tell you something. Another guy that wasn't used to his full pot potential. Okay. All, all right. So. Vince, he's one. Jose Luis Rivera is one of those guys that would whisper to me and tell me stories about Vince's father, how things were so different when Vince's father was running things, and how Vince's father appreciated a lot more guys. You know what I mean? Jose would tell me those stories. But let me tell you something about him. He might, you, you I know you're thinking, well, he had a good run, Jose Luis Rivera, conquistadors, and you know. There was one point he was huge. I but he really I mean, do you remember that, Jack? There was one point where he was like a, a couple of more a, a couple of more inches and he would be like Tony Atlas. I mean, he was getting huge. Uh, and he's he's like six foot four, six foot, you know what I mean? So I'm like, they gotta do something with him, man. He's getting huge, you know what I mean? He was working out and working out and working out. And you know what? They just another guy they didn't use to his full potential. You know what I mean? It, it yeah. just, or it, it, it could work like, it, you know, better than anybody there. Yeah. You know, it just sometimes it, that business was really frustrating. You know what I mean? But <laughs> without a doubt, Paul, Paul, Paul Roma is that's, that's why I love this guy. He always so good about me. Oh, Jose, listen to me. Every time, man. Sanita, every time. Uh, listen, listen, I, I listen. The, you can't, you can't get any better. I would, I mean, I, I think Strongbow would get aggravated with me a little bit because I, I mean, I just didn't chuckle with him. He would make me laugh my ass off. I mean, I couldn't breathe. I'd be crying. I'd, I'd be, my laugh would bellow through the dressing room. <laughs> Yeah, brother. Yeah, man. Yeah, we'll have is... a good time. Those yeah, days, that was the good old days, bro. Yeah, man, this is fantastic. Where'd Roma go? He froze. He went to the bathroom. He went to the.
take it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. He went, he went to the bathroom. Went to the bathroom. <laughs> Oh, back. man, this is great. What a great surprise, man. This is fit. Hey, listen, you could do a whole show on him alone. Mm. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to have to. We'll, we'll see oh, what we can squeeze well, in Listen, what an all-star. What an all-star. That would have to be a two-hour show. You get me, Roma, Jose, and Costello on. Whoa, man. Maurice, that's his show. We'll beat the porn star on that show. Yeah. Me, and Jack, me, and, me and Jack could take that night off and just... We'll just leave you guys out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> Where the heck did Roma go? I told you already. You're <laughs> my own. It's a long bathroom break, per se. Yes. <laughs> this is what so happened. Jose, you, Jose you, you retire yet? 30 years? No? No, no. I still go in. A couple of more years. It's a tough job. If you, if I could make it, I do it. That's a tough job. That's that. But well, somebody has somebody has to do it. Nobody's gonna mess with him. Nobody's gonna mess with him. He, I've he, been used to before. Yeah, yeah, and you wrapped him up real fast. <laughs> <laughs> I used to fight every other day. It, Straight to slap yes. that front face lock on him. You make him yeah. scream with that front, Maurice. That front face lock make you scream for your mother. That front face. You put that front face lock on, right? That guy's in so much pain. He he can't move. He's paralyzed. You put that. But now I'm on. now I'm okay. I'm I'm in a master control. I take care of all the the. I work in the. It's like a hospital for the email, you know, ah. for the prisoner, and uh, I do the the master control. They always that uh like today. There was uh, some situation, but if the situation is in the left, I go to the right side. Yeah, not yeah. anymore, brother. No, nah, man, no nah. anymore. No, no, no. I do my job eight hours, six hours, whatever, and I go home. Yeah, yeah. Those things happen. Those they pass away. Yeah, you, you know, know when there was a situation in any any jail, I had to go there. I have to go in. The first one who go in is me, and that's it. No more. You're not on the line anymore. You're you're done with that. No more front line yeah, for you. Just taking yeah. care. I have a 12 year old boy that I have to take care of him too. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's good that you're in that position. Nice and easy. Yeah. Nice and easy. That's, that's why you stay there. Yeah. Yeah. Nice and easy. You know, Vince yeah. should have all of us back. You know that. Yeah, have a, just a, a big show and just bring all of us back. You know, the fans oh, maybe, maybe they put a Hall of Fame. Oh, oh. We got we got the whole we got everything to be there. You should be in the Hall of Fame. You should absolutely oh, Prada, be you for Roma, Jim yeah. Power. We was the one who made those people start. Yeah, like yeah. they say, ah, oh, what you are a jobber? No, I'm a uh, I'm a star maker. Well, yeah, listen, well, you know, I, I, listen, I, I tell people all the time, I, you know, I, I can't, I can't sell out a house, but I can build you one. I can build yep. you a house, but I, I can't That's sell what we out. do. You That's know what, what we do. And I, every podcast, well, this is mainly the only podcast I do now, but it was me, Jose, SD, Steve Lombardi. Johnny Rods, you know, Charlie Fulton. God bless Charlie Fulton. What a nice guy. Charlie was yeah. a great guy. Uh, Iron Mike Sharp, you know, all these guys, we were we were there. Then you would get some guys that would come in and you'd never see them again. They'd go out there, do one job, and then you'd never see them again. They just did not ask them to come back. Uh, but, but we they we had the 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 steadies. Then Rusty Brooks, came, Rusty Brooks came in. I love Rusty. Rusty Rusty came in. You know. So so uh, uh, um, oh, what was his first name? Mike? No, Hunter. That guy, Hunt, the older guy, came in. And sometimes he wore the hood. Hunter. That was his last name. There's Roma. And, I and uh, back. you guys got to pay your bills, man. You, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. 
Ah, Jose, you you went, Jose said you went to the bathroom. I go, where'd Roma go? He goes, he went to the bathroom. I look at Jose. Jose's the same, man. He's the same. Oh, God. So, yeah, I mean, there were, we were the staples there, you know what I mean? And, and, and I don't know. I, I don't know. I look back at it and I look at guys like Jose. I even look at guys like SD. Now, I understand SD and Tony Atlas were going to be the tag team champions. SD was finally getting his push. But Tony Atlas fell in love and he didn't show, he didn't show up. <laughs> He didn't, Tony didn't show up, so um, that that went down the drain. So, but um, even SD, he got remember Roma, he got in incredible shape. His abs were out and everything. I wouldn't be surprised if you were the one that was helping him. No, I mean we were training. Um, we were on the road quite a bit. He he was he was such a great person, you know, a, a great mentor. Um, he was a great guy to go on the road with. He's always going to, you know, put you, point you in the right direction. Um, you could always trust him. You know, not like Rivera. I mean, anybody. <laughs> with- <laughs> yeah, I, I drove with, I, I drove Rivera and I had one hand on my wallet and one hand on the camera. <laughs> I mean, what the hell? No, I'm just kidding. You know, I'm kidding. Jose. Listen, uh, I, the, the SD, I, the first time I ever traveled with SD, it, it was fairly early, maybe three, four months in. And, he had, he had bought that brand new brand new Buick LeSabre. He had a brand new Buick SD, right? It was like an 85 Buick LeSabre. And I got in there and we were going to like Pennsylvania and and we hit the highway and he said, I'm going to smarten you up to the business. I said, what? He goes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to smarten you up to the business. I didn't even know what that meant. I didn't even know what that meant. But then he started talking and I'm like, Oh, Oh, then he was, then he taught me pig Latin. He goes to, there's people talking in front of you. You don't even know what they're saying. So he taught me pig Latin and I drove him crazy with that in the car. All right. All right. All right, kid, you got it down. You got it down. I was, I was pointing to everything, you know, naming it in pig Latin, everything. He goes, you got it down. You got it down. Okay. Okay. And that, that was that one time I went out to breakfast at Roma and this waitress came up to the table like this, can I take your order? And I said, Leah's look at the tears. It's on these. And she goes, and they're real. Uh, and Roman goes, yeah, you got busted. She knows what you said. You got busted, man, CD. I said, how the hell does she know pig Latin? I'm going to look, Leah's look at the Sia's eyes of these. Those. Holy, she is it. She goes, you're real. And anyway, I go, I turned beet red. Roman was like, you got busted. <laughs> Oh my God, SD was a good guy, man. SD was. Yeah, good. Well, he was my my partner in crime. He, he, we would do everything together, brother. Yeah. We start driving together. We stay together in the dressing room. We got the. Uh, no, I cannot say that because somebody. Yeah. <laughs> SD took SD took care of me there too, man. We, I I got a story from Chicago. I really can't. I can't tell that story. But anyway, um. It, you know, SD looked out for you. SD looked yeah. out for you in all aspects. All aspects. He was he was he was a true gentleman. He really he, he was. He really he really was. But only Roma and Jose will understand this. Only Roma and Jose will understand this. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I forgot about that. I did. I, really, I forgot all about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Me too. Wow. I go, yeah. SD, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? And he explained why. I'm like, oh, oh, <laughs> oh, oh, my God. He was something else. He was something he was. else. SD. Yeah. What a great guy. What a great. They were all. They were all great guys. They. They were all. They, they, they were all. all good there guys. were a lot of really. There, there are a lot of decent guys, you know, people as, as, as people, you know, being a good person. Uh, but, you know, I said this the other day, I think if there were, 
a hundred wrestlers, you put a hundred wrestlers in the room, there were 10 out of that hundred that were those people, you know, really, you could trust them. And they're just really good hearted people. Um, it was just a tough business that, you know, you, you really, you had to keep your guard up all the time. It was, it was horrible. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, you, you, you see the, the stories now coming out. I, I thoroughly enjoy um, Ryback's TikTok. I enjoy his <laughs> TikTok. I really do. Um, and, and I enjoy, um, I think his name is Maven. Uh, yes. You know, I, because he, he, you know, he tells the truth. He'll look and say, hey, this is where I screwed up. You know what I mean? And I, I like his TikToks, too. I just sit there and I, I watch all of them. You know what I mean? So, um, it, you know, it, right down the Brett, when when Vince said, hey, you're going to be the champ for a long time. I mean, you're talking Bob Backlund years. You're going to be the champion here. And then done. You know, it was it's that kind of business. You know what I mean? It's that. I mean, look what they did to Roma. Look what they did to Roma out of nowhere with no explanation. Roma starts getting booked. He starts getting booked. So Roma's in Cincinnati and and Ray's in Syracuse. Roma's in Cincinnati going over. Ray's in Syracuse doing a job. You know what I mean? So Roma's like he wants answers. So he, he's like, well, "Why'd you split us up? What you what are you doing?" You know what I mean? And nobody could give him a good answer. So he went to the WCW. You know what I mean? It, it, they they do they do messed up things. You know? Oh, Chad, yeah. Our, our our plans changed. We're, we're we're not doing that anymore. You know and what I mean? Look, look, it would all be okay. We're all grown men and women, but. For the most part, grown men. Just let's be straight. You know they they play these games, these head games, childish games. Um, and you you would think you know you you own a, a well then it wasn't a multi million but you know it was a million dollar company. You know now it's a trillion dollar company. But um, yeah, I mean you're a grown man. And, and you had grown men around you, at least they were supposed to be. And they weren't grown men, maybe only age-wise. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, they just couldn't be trusted. You wanted to trust them. You wanted to believe what they told you. You were hoping it was true, most of the time anyway. But it never, you know, for the most part, it really never was. But, you know, it's, it's Maurice. It's like the podcast we had when all that stuff with Vince went down. And Vince resigned. Vince, re you're like Vince resigned as the CEO of the WWE. And what did I do? I just started laughing. Yeah. I said, "Are you serious? Are you really believe that?" See, I'll always say, no matter what, it comes down to a work. It's still professional wrestling. So, it, pro wrestling originated in the carnival, and basically everybody's a carny. So. Pro wrestling and the people that run pro wrestling, it's like when they talk to you, it's like this, right? It's like this. And your attention all of a sudden goes to this hand. And while they're talking, you're looking at the hand, at their left hand, but their right hand's in your pocket. You don't even know it. That's the wrestling. <laughs> that's the wrestling business. Hey, Jose, how about when Altamar tried to roll the Samoans and they caught him? Yeah. I tried to roll, and he got on his hands and knees and begged them not to kill him. <laughs> he used to do that a lot. He used That's to roll people. To yeah. yeah I, 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 listen, when I was 17 years old in wrestling school, okay, I went my whole senior year of high school, Tony Altamar would be by the ring, and I would just be talking to him about wrestling, and he'd go, uh-huh, uh-huh, and he would take out a roll of money, stack and he would start taking each bill. Now, Jack, watch me. He starts going, counting it like this. Not flipping the bills. He's stretching every bill out, and he's going like this. And as he's going, he got the reaction he wanted from me. And as he's going like this, I'm going. <laughs> and he's chuckling. He's, he's laughing. I'm like, what is he laughing at? And I'm watching. 
watching, it's it, it's like taking a milk bone, taking a biscuit and going in front of your dog and going and watching him go up, down, down. That, that's what he was doing to me. And basically, that's the wrestling business. It's just like what I did last night. You know, these guys booked Roma and I for the Mohegan Sun on November 18th and 19th. And one guy called me up and said, I'm going to have the guy call you. He connected me with the guy. And he was, Scott was a very nice guy. Very nice guy. So I hung up with him and I called Frank back. And he goes, oh, did you talk to Scott? I go, yeah, thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. I go, listen, I don't know. I don't, I don't like getting disrespected like that. I don't appreciate that. Who's this guy think he is telling me he's going to put me in Rome in a corner without a lot of traffic. I go, what are we, the misfits of this thing? Why are we going to go up? He goes, he told you that I go, listen, this guy talks so down to me. I can't believe you even put me on to him. I said, this guy's an asshole. And I hung up. He's like, I'm going to get that a hold was, of That was now. the guy who canceled all the show when we supposed to go to Hamburg, PA. So that's Scott Wilder. So that, this is a different oh, Scott. This that's, is a that's different, a, that's yeah, another it's a, one. It's a different guy. So I think they're, they're the same. Yeah, no, it was a different guy. So, <laughs> so, uh, so, <laughs> so he went to call the guy and text the guy. The guy didn't answer and he didn't text him back yet. And he calls me back and he goes, I'm going to tell this guy I'm never going to do his card show again. I'm never going to work with him again. And at that point, I just didn't have a heart. And I went, Hey, Frank, welcome to professional wrestling. He goes, What? I go, It's the rib. He goes, A what? I go, It was a joke. The guy was sweet as pie, and like he took the biggest deep breath and goes, "Why did you do that to me?" It's, it's the wrestling business. That's what you do. That's what you do. You, you rib people. That's that's what you do. You know what I mean? So that's it's it, you know, I Vince McMahon could look somebody dead in the face. I, I, listen, every interview did watch the interviews from the the early nineties, like the Donahue show and stuff. And I would sit, I would watch it all the time and I'd laugh because Vince wasn't saying anything on that panel. But when his eyes bugged out and he did one of these and his eyebrows went back in his ears, I went, oh, he's hot. He's hot, man. He wants to kill somebody right now. He is fuming. You just knew, you know, when you, you when you know, you spent enough time with him, you just knew, you know, and when he would say, when he used to say, certainly I can assure you that that's this. <laughs> that's this. That's this. Certainly I can assure you. <laughs> it's it's just Mario, those two guys that you got behind you, though, they can talk. Wh who? What's behind me? This those two guys in the front. In the top of the <laughs> you gentlemen have a question for Jose Luis Rivera? Well, just a, just a general a general question building on, on your presentation, Mario. You, you pointed out that uh, and, and Paul as well spoke of uh, you know the quote unquote carny aspects of the business with this with this new merger between uh wwe and ufc under the tko umbrella and that that at least uh corporate presentation that uh triple h likes to talk about and, and everybody else do you, do you ever see that that aspect that uh for lack of a better term that chicanery that working aspect of that product at least from a big company perspective changing or is wrestling always going to be wrestling depending on what you're you know, rules of engagement are. Is that a question to me? To everybody. Everybody's let me, in. Let me give you an example. We have an extremely talented superstar that I had very little to do. I just taught the kid how to fall. Roma molded this kid all by himself. Superstar. Signed with MLW, unfortunately had cancer, beat it, came back, built himself up, Richard Holiday. Well, he got invited 
to the facility down in Florida to try out for the WWE. They told, listen now, Jack, he's got a presence when he walks into the room. He cut the best promo down there they've seen in 10 years. Mm -hmm. Loved his work in the ring. Has a lot of charisma. He came home. He got the call on a Friday. Holiday, so-and-so from the WWE. Sorry, we're not taking you. So you want to ask me if it's still, I mean, a guy, uh, you go down there and say, listen, tough competition down here. We'll see how you do. You did really good. We were impressed by you, but we'll let you know. That's honest. That's straightforward. You don't go and pump this kid's dreams up to the point where his head almost explodes, where he goes home and says, I think I'm a shoe in I think I'm a shoe in I was so upset for this kid that I called Gabe Sapolsky, and I was screaming, and he let me. He let me go the whole nine yards. God bless Gabe. He let me go. <laughs> he let me do the whole thing. And he said, Mario, I understand that you're upset. He goes, but who knows the reasons, you know, who knows, you know, they only, did they take two? Did they take three? I don't know. He goes, I, I don't know the reason they, they like him. I like holiday. I think he's a talented guy. I know for a fact, and a uh, six foot four, 19 year old kid that went down there and he was exceptional. I know, I know they must've taken him, but I don't know why they didn't take holiday. I go, but why would they tell him all that stuff and not tell him? Typical, typical Jack. Vince, can I talk to you for a minute? Jose, I'll tell you. Vince, can I talk to you for a minute? Yeah, well, what can I do for you, Mario? I go, listen, uh, can I get a little push? I like you. The office likes you. Just be patient. Hey, Pat, Pat. Yeah, 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 Mario. Can I talk to you for a minute? Can I get more bookings? You know, could, can I get a little push? Mario, I like you. The office likes you. Just be patient. It's almost like they sent a memo out to the office and says, if any of the boys approach you, you tell them these three things. I like you. The office likes you. Just be patient. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's, that's what I would get. And then I would that's fight. With Strong. I, I would fight with Strongbow. I would argue with Strongbow all the time. You know, I did this stretcher match. I did that stretcher match. I just, I go to Canada and I get cow tied around my, my wrists and my ankles with rope and a cowbell around my neck. The Funk Brothers pull my trunks down and brand my ass with an ink iron that with FB Funk Brothers. What I do with stretcher with Orndorff, stretcher with Bundy, stretcher with Savage. I get my nose broken by Schultz. What else do you want me to do? What do I have to do for you to say, why don't we give this kid a little more? You know what I mean? No, no. You know, it, it's only guys like Jose. Uh, guys like Jose, guys like Johnny Rods, you know, uh, guys like Valentine, Tito Santana, Pedro Morales, guys like that. I go like this too because – in, in, when I was 14 years old, I was watching them at midnight. You know what I mean? They, they were the guys like Danny Davis that started putting up the ring when he was 15 years old. I go like yep. this too. I'm no, I, to those guys, I'm nobody. You know, they were there before me. They have all the right in the world before me. You know what I mean? Because they were, they, they paid their dues before I did. But by 1988, 89, when I was there, four or five years, because Tony Altamar told me, Dave Barbie, and Seth Cohen, and, you know, put five years in with Vince, and I'll give you a push. That's what Tony Altamar told us in wrestling school. Stay there five years, and I'll give you a push. Okay. I said to myself, five years, I'll be 23 years old. 
I, I broke in six weeks after I turned 18 years old. I turned 18 years old. 40 days later, I turned pro after I turned 18. So uh, I said, well, I'll be 23 years old. I'll get a pet. I mean, yeah, that's fine. I left three months before I turned 26. I was still, I left when guys were just break, <laughs> breaking in. So I, you know what I mean? I, I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. Paul, your thoughts on that question and Jose? Well, what should I say? My senior just said it all. My senior, what I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that's the truth. That's the, the way they are. Yeah. That's you, the way they are. When you talk, you see Vince, Vince, can I talk to you? Yes, Jose, what you need? Oh, let's do the. I like it. Let's go with it. That's what he used to say. Hey, Vince, uh, the, the best thing he do when uh, that was a shadow, me and Randy. So Randy left the. Randy left. Something happened to him when he said, I go. And he, I stay by myself. So I was talking to Strata. Strata, we could do a, a Latin Titan. Uh, Strata told me, Well, you talk to Vin. I said, I'll talk to Vin. So he come Vin down the road, down the, the aisle, and I say, Vince, can I talk to you? Yes, yeah, so Jose, what you want? Listen, what about Jose and I make a Titan, a Latin Titan, something with a Mac or something? He say, oh, I like it. Let's go with, with it. Uh, get something that shine, something shining, whatever, you know. Also, that we, we came with the conquistador of it, with the, the gold of it and everything. So they want to do something with us, but the fair match they put up with uh, uh, the England, uh, what the, the Hold British will do. Yeah, for the, the, that was the Titan champion. What we don't do. So... I say, well, we're gonna do a little push later on. We finish everything. We do a job for everybody in there. What we're gonna do? Yeah, that's the way it is. Yeah, they told you yes, we're gonna do it, and you say, well, they're gonna do this. When then you have you you find out that this that's what they say. Okay, let's do it, and you work for it, and that's it. It's hard, but we have to do it. If you say no, you're not coming back. Well, that's what happened. Yeah, when you, yeah, if you go, no, 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 I'm not doing that. You're done. You're mm -hmm. you're all you're all through. You're, you, no, I'm not doing that. You're done. You're through. That's right. I know. I know that they they used to write uh You guys make a guy looking that they, they don't want even tell him ten ten dollars, and you make they do like a million dollar guy. That's what we used to do. I say, well, that's that what we, we get paid for, to make them look good. So we do everything we can to make those people look good. Even if they don't know what they're doing in the ring. Like no. you guys. No, no, Out by Jack. Out <sighs> by Jack. We went, SD John and I went to the to WWF. Uh, they got to put the ring. Me and SD John trying to work with this guy. And then they should say, amigo, he never going to make it. <laughs> <laughs> I said, we, we have to do it, bro. We have to do it. It's, it's hard. Do you know how many times I've gotten picked up by the hair after a bump and I'm saying to myself, this guy can't wrestle himself out of a wet paper bag. But there I was counting the lights on the ceiling of the arena. One, <laughs> two, three. And we had to we do it because that's yeah. how we're up. Yep. We have to make stars, so we make a star. Paul, do you see the industry uh, changing for the better to be more open and transparent than uh, during the, the previous heyday, so to speak? Well, I, I see that um, they can't get away with what they did back in our day today. Most of it's because, you know, everything is seen on social media and you get exploited, I mean, really fast. Um, but I, I see the, the wrestling, what very, very little I watch. Um, and, and again, short, short answer. It sucks. They just go out and, and do things, high spots that mean nothing. Um, they miss spots. 
uh, they miss moves and they try to cover them up. Um, it, it's such a, a far cry from, you know, where we came from. And I just don't understand, you know, the old saying of, if it's not broken, don't fix it. And these guys are, are trying to fix something that was never broken and they've made it worse. Um, so again, I think any organization, whether it's AEW, um, if it's Vince WWE, um, if it's this new company out of Chicago, I heard they're up and coming. Um, if they just go back to what wrestling used to be, they're, they're going to win. It's a home run. People are going to gravitate to it because you could teach any monkey to do high spots. But if I wanted to see monkeys, I'd just go to the zoo and I see all the tricks in their cage, you know? And, and as far as like, again, if you're, if you're cookie cutting your guys, then that's no good either. And not because, you know, Richard Holiday is one of our students uh, or was one of our students, but the kid has that presence. I brought him to an autograph show with me, he took a ride with me to an autograph show. And he was walking around just seeing who was there. And one of the one of the boys grabbed me and they said, I said, hey, I'd like you to meet one of my guys. And when I called him over, he goes, I knew he was your guy. I said, what do you mean by that? He goes, he walked around here just like you. And I went, <laughs> OK, he was no, it wasn't a bad thing, but you could see that confidence he carried. And um, he goes, he looks great. And I said, oh, thank you. I appreciate that. You know, I mean, I had a little bit to do with it, but not all that much. And as Mario stated, um, the kid is, you know, six, what is he, six, three? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's just, he just has that look. And for, and, and I had said to him, listen, if you go to another organization, Vince is going to come, come back and get you because he loves stealing people from other, other companies. I said, don't take it to heart. I mean, you're the best of the best. I'm one of your biggest fans. And, and I can't say that about anybody because, you know, I mean, he's just, the kid's got the goods. Mm -hmm. Whatever reason why they didn't cho you know, choose him, it could be, you know, a few that I explained to him. But for the most part, don't take it to heart, kid, because you're that good. You are, you are entertainment personified. It's, I said, it's Vince's loss. That, 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 you know, bring you on, on board. But, you know, don't hesitate. Go to AEW. Go to a different company. Um, it's their loss. Now it's up to him. You know, it's... Jack, to, to give you another answer, pro wrestling will never be the same. I'm going to tell you something about myself, Jose, and, and Roma. I said it a thousand times. I'll say it a thousand one times. When we wanted to become professional wrestlers, we wanted to break into the wrestling business. We cared about the wrestling. We cared about being wrestlers. Okay? We wanted to be wrestlers. We broke into the wrestling business. We didn't break into the entertainment business. We, we, we took our pride. Listen, back in the 80s, there, there was always one question of an unknown guy. Either Pat would ask it, Strongbow, Terry Garvin, Gorilla Monsoon, you name that The one question they would ask, could he work? You think they asked that today? They don't ask that today. Hey, that's a good-looking kid. He's got a good-looking body. Who cares if he can wrestle? You know, we, this is entertainment. You know what I mean? Yeah. We broke into the wrestling business. He's good on the microphone. But yeah, he's good on the microphone. Who get, it, 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 Listen. We broke into the wrestling business. We cared about the wrestling. We wanted to wrestle. That's why I broke in. I wanted to be a wrestler. You know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah. You know, theatrics comes with it. But our theatrics was cutting promos, registering and selling. That was our theatrics. You know what I mean? None of this Hollywood stuff or, you know. I mean, I'll give... I'll give Stone Cold Steve Austin and, and The Rock 
credit. They were the most entertaining because Rock, he was almost a comedian. He was good at what he did, and 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 Steve was good with the mic. That's great entertainment because all they're doing is cutting extended promos. They're still doing old school stuff, but this this other stuff and the 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 lights and the the, the pyro and the and the you know and the women when they work they go eh eh. And I'm like, what is that? What is that? What is it? Yeah. That reminds me, Maurice, you still got to book Nina Hartley on the show. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I need to. So, uh, haven't been able to get her details yet, Mario. No. Need to dig a little bit deeper. Hmm. Well, he's in a shovel. <laughs> <laughs> Well, gentlemen, this has been a, an all-star discussion for sure, and I feel like we've only scratched the surface, but uh, we're uh, rapidly at the end of our hour. Maurice, do you have any any comments for, for the panel at this juncture? Um, do you want to go for another 30 minutes? Either Jack's frozen or he's like, his face looks like, yeah, I don't want to do that. <laughs> no, I was frozen. I must have been frozen. I was waiting. Of course, I'm down, but I was waiting for the consensus. Uh, uh, Will we go for uh, another few minutes? Uh, we can go. Or has anyone got plans? I don't. Uh, we can go for another, another few minutes. Um, yeah. Okay. So I throw, had. Throw it at us. I had a question. Go, go ahead. The two gentlemen at the bottom, Paul and Jose, had you any experiences, bad or good, over the years with one ultimate warrior? <laughs> go on, Jose. He was, uh, he was uh, what you might call a potato, like we say. It's, you, had, you had to do everything for him. You know, he's... he's Wow, hell of the guy. He jumped into this, but you do it for him, you know. You make it look great. That's why he he built up. Because he wrestled with some other guy. He just killed them. One, two, three, and go. When he was wrestled with us, we they we got more time with him. We do a lot of things with him. But as other guy he get mad and they that's it, finish. Let's go. Man. That was the warrior. Well, I never worked against the warrior or with with the warrior, at least not that I could ever recall. Um, got along with him. Thought he was a super nice guy. And, um, yeah, I mean, I watched. You know, I watched them dismantle guys, uh, some more than others. It all depends on where they were on the food chain. Um, I think that went for a lot of people, you know, when, when it was their time. So, but other than that, shake those ropes, baby. Make some money. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. 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 Since we have uh, both Paul and uh, Jose on the panel, and y y you both are, are not exclusively, but known for your, your tag team work, what are your thoughts on uh, the the basic, um, well, the lack of focus, I will say, in the big companies on tag team wrestling in in this this modern era? Considering the, you know, the the number of classic matches in the past, the list goes on and on, and how, uh, you know, tag teams were in main events in in many territories, including uh, the WWF. What do you think the reasons are for that? Uh, that sort of uh, devolution, so to speak. Well, when, when we wrestled a tight team like uh, the Conquistador, I used to wrestle Paul Roman and uh, Jim, Jim Powers. We always have a great matches. And uh, with all the people that we wrestle, they got uh, we, we put them over, we make them good, like million dollars, you know. So the, the deal is we had to, to do. We ask them, you want to do something? Oh, what you want to do? No, you call it. Okay, we call it and we, we you do the great matches with uh, Shawn Michael, Mary Janetti, the, the Killer Beast, 
all the people there, the, all the tag team, we went on through all of them. So Paul Roma and Jim Power too, they went through all of them too. And we got a great match with every, almost everybody. We got a good match. Uh, thank you, Warren. It was a good one. And uh, we make, we go for it. We do everything we can to make that match look good with the Russian brother. We don't, uh, you know, all the tight things. We went through all of them, all of them. Yeah. I, I, I think what's lacking today is, like Jose just said, we work together. Um, we didn't have to get, if we knew 53 moves, we didn't have to get our 53 moves in, in a match. Uh, we worked we told a story. We kept the crowd engaged. We um, got each other over. We got over what we what we could do as wrestlers, and we enhanced that for each other. Today they don't. Today what they do is they go out and say, to their, "Let's see, if I'm out there for 10, 15 minutes, how many moves can I get in?" I mean, yeah, you don't even know they have a partner sometimes because they're not tagging in and out. They're not, you know being a cohesive uh, team, it's, I'll do my spots, I'll tag you, you do your spots, I'll tag you, you do, you know, and that's how it is nowadays. And that's where the structural breakdown came from. Again, as Jose said, back in our day, we worked with one another. We were like, you know, it was like a family. We took care of each other. Right. And we didn't have to beat the living hell out of our, our bodies by doing a thousand spots that made no sense so you know today they pump in the uh the crowd applauding they pump in the crowd screaming and yelling because again if you watch the crowd and you hear this massive amount of applause nobody's clapping but yet you hear you hear all this sound coming in well it wasn't like that back in our day because a they didn't think of it and b they didn't have to do that because the people did a applaud us they did appreciate the work we put in in the story that we told you know good guys against bad guys so uh, that's the difference the evolution of professional wrestling and i'm going to give you guys some homework and this is why the business changed the demographic so i want both you guys to go on youtube Look at Stan Hansen versus Bruno Sammartino. Look at the Bob Backlund match against superstar Billy Graham. And see if they pan the audience. I challenge you to find one kid, one child. No, you won't be able to. It's only the time I broke in in this Hulkamania say your prayers, take your vitamins, you know, started started targeting children at certain age groups. And when you target those certain age groups, your pot product has to be such, you know what I mean? Let's let Jack, let's, let's, let's pop up Baron Von Raschka. Baron Von Raschka with, would throw that claw on somebody and the big red X would come on the TV and it would say censored <laughs> because there was blood, right? No more blood. No more blood. No more chairs. No more. No, the attitude era had thongs going up women's asses. No more. Yep. No, no more. We're, we're corporate. We're, we're, you know, they, they want to be, Wrestling Hollywood. That's what they want. They want to be the wrestling version of Walt Disney. It's not professional wrestling. That's not what it is. That's not, you know what I mean? You know, 1979 when I was 13 years old and I'm laying in my bed there and I have my 12, 13 wrestling magazines and I pick one up and Harley Race is a bloody mess on the cover, you know? No, not anymore. It's all gone. It's, it's go, it, it'll never come back. But like Roma said, if a company would decide to go back there, I agree. I think they'll be a winner. 
You know, I mean, it, it, what a waste. You know, you get guys like you get guy. Look, I won't get on this case anymore. You know what I mean? Because I made my peace in New Jersey, but certain people became agents. You don't think Jose Luis Rivera or Paul Roma could have been an effective agent in the WWE? You don't think Jose Luis Rivera or Paul Roma could have taught these young kids psychology and the business and what to do in the ring and not what to do in the ring? And they let them walk away. They let that knowledge, that wealth of knowledge walk away. You know what I mean? These guys could have been agents. You know, instead they bring in Hollywood. You guys write it. Listen, if Roma, myself, and Jose were sitting in Poughkeepsie and Howard Finkel started handing out these papers and we said, what's this? And they said, oh, that's your match for tonight. I said, what do you mean? Move by move. That's your match. Memorize the moves. Don't go off script. You're going to have to do all the moves that are on that paper. What? Try giving Don Morocco. Give the Magnificent Morocco a script and say, this is your promo. This is what you're going to say. One of the best. Of wrestling. Watch his promo in Madison Square Garden just before he went out to the cage with Snuka. That promo will give you goosebumps. It's incredible, that promo he cuts. One of the best guys. All right? He had no catchphrase. I'm talking about straight promo. He had no, because that's the bottom line. He didn't have the, can you smell what? He didn't have the candy ass. He didn't have any of that. He he just cut a great promo. He just cut a great promo. And you know what the sad part is? The people that remember know that Don Morocco, he is the rock. He's the only rock I know. You know, so the business is Hollywood. That's what it is. It's 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 Walt Disney in a ring. And to use the words Roma used, it sucks. It sucks. You can't sit there with a guy anymore and go, okay, what do you want to do? What are your thoughts? What do you want? To do? I think we, you know, you, you know, when you go to take your jacket off, lean over and give it to the guy, give it to the, to the, to the ring guy, and I'll attack you from behind. Turn around. I'll go give you a buckle. Reverse it. I'll pop out. Give me a hip toss, two arm drags, and a slam, and I'll screw. Yeah, you don't do that anymore. You don't do that anymore. It's all written down for you. Yeah, they can't even hit their spots. No, these guys aren't creative. They can't. If you took the script away and said do a match, I, I'm afraid they wouldn't be able to do it. They wouldn't. They wouldn't be able to do it. You know what I mean? So the whole business is just. I, I don't. I don't. I don't watch a second of it. Nothing. And our our silent partner at Paradise Alley always gets mad. How can you go in there and teach these kids and not watch the product? So when I go in there, I go, listen, I'm going to teach you what I was taught by Strongbow, by Fuji, Pat Patterson. I'm going to teach you all this stuff. And then I'm going to hand you off the Roma. And he's really going to polish you. And you're going to learn how to work when you leave here. What you do after that, to go forward, that you do yourself, that's your business. But while you're here, you're going to do it our way. You go out there and you want to do all that stuff, go ahead. No, I mean, nobody can stop you. But you're going, to have the, you're going to have the foundation, a solid foundation of professional wrestling when you leave this, this school. You know? I would love to have uh, Jose come down and spend a couple hours with these kids. He'd blow their minds. No, you're not doing that. No, do that that way. Do that this way. Do that that way. I'd like Tito right. to come down and do that. But, well, Tito wants a lot of money just to step out his front door. <laughs> <laughs> Tito, you want to go out to breakfast? 1500 
<laughs> I'm guessing he's not going to be a future guest on your show then, Mario. Well, well, no, well, Tito, you, you, okay, I seriously, if I asked Tito to do it, I bet you would. I bet you Tito would do it. You know what I mean? Um, you know, um, I bet you Billy and Barry would do it too. Tony Atlas would definitely do it. You know, a, a lot of these guys. Roma wouldn't do your show though, Maurice. He dead set against it. Yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't come on. No. I get a, I get one of those. Uh, I get a foot foot fetish porn star on the Tony Atlas show. He'd like that, wouldn't he? Oh, he would. He he would. He, yeah, if you get a nice pair of shoes. Yeah. For Tony Atlas, you got a nice. No, listen, she's got to have a nice pair of loafers. Okay. We can Tony yeah, likes low. Look at Jose smiling, man. <laughs> He's going to hurt. Are you walking my face? <laughs> Are you walking my check? <laughs> that was Tony. Mancini, uh, Mancini, Mancini. What, Tony? Look at them shoes, brother. Look at them shoes. <laughs> I'm like, Tony, let it go, man. Don't ask her to, to walk on your face. Oh, God. Oh, man. I tell you, American, I'll, American uh, everything. I'll tell you guys the same thing I tell the students. I wish I could blink my eyes and take you back to the dressing room. Just let you sit in the corner in 1985. Just let you sit in the corner and watch the dressing room all night. And then come back to 2023 and both of you would go. I get it. I get. I get it. Jose, Jose, I'm sitting next to Jose in the dressing room. There's, there's two rooms with couches and chairs in it. Comfortable. We can't go in there. We got to get dressed outside in the hall in in, in the hallway portion in Poughkeepsie. We got to dress. Valentine and Orndorff and all those guys are in the comfortable couch rooms. All the rest of us are out out in the uh, hallway portion of the, the dressing room getting dressed, you know. But I told you that story. One day I got pissed off and I go, I'm getting dressed in there. I'm getting dressed in there. I'm going in there. I'm going to sit down and start getting dressed. So I sat down in one of those comfortable recliners there, those nice chair. I sat there. I zipped open my bag. I took my boots out and I saw a pair of feet in front of me. And it was Valentine. And I looked up and he went, leave took my bag my boots went back out couldn't sit in those rooms those were for the guys that were over couldn't sit in those rooms hmm. a bit harsh yeah 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 man it was something else it, it was it was really it, but you know what it, it was also a good feeling because when you went into the dressing room and you saw Jose and you, you you know you saw SD and then you know SD would get a hold of Tony Atlas then Tony Atlas would get a hold of Junkyard Dog and then all of a sudden everybody's in a circle and everybody's laughing and joking and and, and we're laughing our asses off. I, I I explained one time Big Daddy the Guardian I, of Chaos Big Daddy. I I, I, I explained to you one time that the, I had such a good time in the dress room. It's because of Jose. I had such a good time in the dressing room. The wrestling got in the way. It's like, man, Cena, you're up. I go, I, I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah. Quick question for the panel before we have to wrap up. Can you tell us what the biggest difference between today's work rate as compared to your careers? Don't want to kayfabe you, Guardian of Chaos. All right. Well, the contracts today are for millions of dollars, right? I, I, I don't know. I'm sure it's very. They're a lot better than when we were there, without a doubt. I, I, listen, I was driving to Syracuse for two hundred dollars. If uh, we don't wrestle, we don't get paid. Yeah. Now they, they, they I, send a contract, and you get the money. Even if you don't wrestle, you get the money. Yeah. yeah but I think today when they bring you down. They're getting anywhere from three to five hundred uh, just to show up and be there, even if they don't wrestle. So 
you know, it's a hell of a lot more than what we got. But but as Jose uh, says, we didn't work, we didn't get paid. These guys don't work, they still right. get paid. They got yes, guaranteed sir. contracts. Correct. 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 I just yeah, we, we used to sign a contract. We, we signed a contract for two years, out. but we never paid. We don't work. I mean, you really can't say you've ever gone into a TV taping and not work. But if I didn't work, I'd just go over to Jose's bag and take his money. <laughs> <laughs> There's one thing Tony Altamaro always told me. You keep your poke in your sock. Oh, uh, you keep your poke in your sock. I still teach that to our students today. I got rolled one time. And it was fast and it was clever. Was it in flower? I got rolled one. It was in a Google cluster. I got rolled one time. I brought this guy with me, asked if he could room with me. And I went to go pay for the hotel cash. And I was like, I don't know, seven bucks short. So the hotel desk guy turned his back. I went down to get another $10. I came back up. There was like $60 missing. He goes, no, you need another 67. I go, no, no, I need another seven. He goes, no, no, there's, there's, you don't have enough money here. I go, no, no, I counted it. And I looked over at Sylvana Souza and I said, Suze, did you roll me? Did you just roll me for $60? No, 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 no. I go, Suze, you just rolled me for 60 bucks. No, no, Mario. I go, Sue, I'm not crazy. The money was on the counter. I bent down to get more money. The money's gone. No, I go, Sue, you rolled me. You rolled me. No, no, I didn't roll you. So now I call Tony Altamar. I said, listen, because Tony was good friends with Sylvana Sousa. I go, Sousa rolled me. You know what Altamar said to me? Eh, hey, kid, he's got a daughter that's blind. She's blind. Let it go. Just let it go. His daughter's blind. So I went, okay. Okay. Yep. What are you going to do? He said, let it go. His daughter's blind. I said, oh, okay. I'll let it go. Whatever. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. That's the wrestling biz. It happened. It happened. A lot of fun. It was still a lot of fun. Oh. Happened. Happened. The wrestling business was a lot of fun. The problem is, gentlemen, is the real fun. Can never go on a podcast. Ever. Well, we had some of those questions for sure, but want to uh, hopefully do this again because after an hour and a half almost, I do feel like we've just... Scratch the proverbial surface. Lots of uh, lots of entertainment still to come. Maurice, your thoughts, sir? Yeah, I think we got through maybe about maybe two or three of the questions we had, so we'll definitely have to do this again. Well, we got to do it again because we have to finish the Roma story. So, <laughs> <laughs> which story is that? When, you know, how we met and everything. I almost got done with it. So, um, yeah. Jose, we may get you on for uh, for an interview going through your career as well. Uh, let me tell you something that, that that would be. I can't wait until you do that. I don't need so to be much on in there. That. I don't need to be on for that, man. Get Jose on, and let me tell you something. Because don't forget, Jose was with those guys, man. He was with he was with Dominic Danucci when Danucci was Rocky there. Johnson. You know, yeah, well, I was there when Rocky was there, but he was there because, you know what, SD and the Junkyard Dog would get together and they would pigeon-toe themselves and and go like this. And then they'd start walking around the dressing room making fun of Rocky Johnson because he was, he'd be pigeon-toed, and Rocky put half a can of Copenhagen in his, in his, in his, in yeah. his lip. And he just start walking around, and they, they all start. And then we start laughing, and Rocky go, "What? What? What were you guys laughing at over there?" Like, yeah, nothing, Rocky. You know, <laughs> <laughs> mm. Joey Morello would walk around picking his underwear out of his pants because that's what Strongbow would take three steps, pull his underwear out, take another four steps, pull his underwear out. <laughs> so Joey Morello, man, that that kid. 
I could do a whole show on Joey Morello, but you have Jose on. He was there with Dominic Danucci. He was there with all those guys, man. He was there with Backlund, and I wasn't there with Backlund. He was there with Backlund and and all those guys. You know, I was I was in NWA in Tampa when Backlund was coming to New York. So I I, I get in on Tampa, so Backlund was leaving to New York. That's why that was at in nineteen by the end of seventy eight, something like that. Yeah, that's that's what I that's what I mean. You said well, I was twelve in seventy eight. So, uh, well, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, that's the way it is, bro. <laughs> I was with Backlund in Tampa in '78. I was 12. <laughs> I was two. <laughs> oh, oh God. God! So that's why guys like Jose Jose Estrada. You know, these the, Johnny Rods, Charlie Fulton, Mike Sharp, these guys were my mentors, man. These, these, you know, so, so any bone that was thrown to me, I, I appreciated it because these guys were before me. You know what I mean? There's a, there's a pecking order in professional wrestling. And, and the most respect you get is how long you're in. You know what I mean? So it, it there's a, there's a pecking order to it, but. Anyway, yes, please get Jose on again, man. I'll watch that show in a minute. But, um, <laughs> Absolutely. It's a it, it's a wrap, Mo. The kids Happy. sleeping. Still, still sleeping so far. Happy Friday the 13th, everyone. <laughs> yeah, and, and it looks like so far America made it, it, it without any incident, thank God. Oh, so That's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all right, gentlemen. Well, thank fans, you. thanks uh, thank for, for tuning in tonight. Bye. Thank you, bro. Or Roma, it was nice yes, to see sir. you. Manzanita, yeah. we go, brother. <laughs> we, we, will see you, we will see you in the row again. Let me tell yeah. you something, okay? <laughs> I can call me Manzanita. It's going to be 40, Manzanita. Oh. 40 years, man. 40 years. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, right. Yeah, right. We will Next see each other on the road, man, because I'm going to make Scott Wilder make this up to you. He's going to make it up to you. So, yeah. Jose's mad at Scott right now. See, I if, what I got to do is I got to book Jose, and he'll come. He called me. Somebody else called me for two days on this. Uh, the two day of the weekend, I tell no. I already got a day with uh with this guy Scott. I say oh, see. Then when I call back, he say ah, that's too late now. <laughs> so he made me lose two days. I was Ooh. going there for one day, so he made me lose two days. But that's okay. <sighs> I still do it. No problem. Well, thanks to the esteemed panel. We will definitely do this again and set aside a huge block of time because again, we're just we're just getting started. Fans, that's it for another edition of this special Friday the 13th show on the Cheap Heat Productions Wrestling Podcast. Thank you to Mario Jose, Paul Roma, and of course the man himself, Maurice. Stay safe, everyone out there. Thank you, guys.